Yes, indeed. It is called Lo Let's get this all right. Hello, everyone. This is Art John. We are going to record Dark Souls, and I'm gonna just name this guy Test One, and we're not gonna do anything special with him. We're just gonna add Life Ring because, especially, it's the best burial gift out of all these here. Even though you can get each and every one of these items early game, this is very good. So beginners, be aware of it. When it comes to classes, Knight is probably the best beginner friendly class because he essentially has the best shield, decent sword, and the best armor there is. Mercenaries for those who want to be like you, speedy Gonzalez, go slash and hack and slash. Uh, warrior for those who want to be pure buff boys in strength, as you can see in the stats. And just look barbarian and cool looking. Uh, Harold, I think I never played as Harold before. Uh, he has decent shield, decent spear, or maybe a spear weapon that works really well long distance of battle, but let's be honest, this is, is only good for chasing. So here we have the thief who has a bleeding knife. A knife that causes bleed damage. And has a parry shield. It's very nice to have. But as you can see here, he has little strength and little vitality. Vitality represents armor. Assassin. He has a rapier. They're really quick on their feet. And they have a spell that allows them to move silently throughout the battlefield. And lose fall damage, basically. So, if you're not feeling, I don't know, meh. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to talk about assassin uh, sorcerer. Well, in this case, really good ranked attack, and as you can see, his priority is intelligence and like atonement, which is like the mana in this game, and really squishy when it comes to life points, low endurance, barely any strength, any vitality. Semi in dexterity, so you could basically transform him into a from a normal sorcerer into like a I don't know battle mage or something who uses a sword, but most people prefer the glass cannon method, aka increasing nothing but mana, life, uh, mana and intelligence, and have slightly in life and endurance and vitality. With the, with the leftover stats that you can have. Uh, Pyromancer is a decent, really good class for beginners. Like, they're outside from the melee weapon, which you could basically swap with any weapon after you defeat the first boss. Or hell, you can even get as a random drop by the first basic enemies that you encounter. And what separates him is that he has. Intelligent of Faith, because it's like a balanced class between uh, Sorcerer and the Sorcerer and the, the Cleric. However, fire, most enemies at the beginning of the game are weak to fire, so he's really OP early game. But late game, he you, you don't, I don't know. It it's, it's depends on how good you are at the game. Uh, cleric, by... Dear goodness, he has probably the best beginner weapon, by far, but <clears throat> has a crummy shield, crummy attire, and you most likely want to focus on either strength or faith at the beginning, because, and I recommend strength, because you want that damage, and... Yeah. Also, he ha the mace has the best the weapon skill, which we'll explain later. But the weapon skill that he has is allows him to be basically. You cannot flinch him or like make him stagger for a short period of time. Plus, boosts the defense by thirty percent. So there we have that. Deprive 
basically has nothing but has balance in every single stat and you can basically turn him into whatever class you want him to be but for the sake of this video we're gonna use might and i'm gonna teach you how to go through the first few levels and utilize everything to the maximum potential at least i will try i, I will try to show you how this will work so we pick up the knight we already have burial gift with the best beginner because let's be honest these most of these are just consumables over here this is the only non-consumable and we're not going to edit him and we're just going to go finalize creation test number one let's begin by the way i'm gonna skip every single cutscene, so I'm, I'm sorry for you dark souls fanatics out there bye bye all right let's go run like the wind now first enemy pop you take a turn here and grab a soul but most people will just ignore it because it's like it's some people would consider it's not worth it for the extra time but I'm gonna take it just to show you, hey, there's a soul bubble over here and you can pick it up. And now we have this guy, he's dead. We pick up this flask over here, so now we can restore our mana, which we're not gonna focus on. We're just gonna go kill this guy, we're gonna go kill this guy, we kill this guy. This guy drops something, he drops a fading soul. And where's the arch? Oh, there he is. Uh, go kill this guy. Hey, some people might say, oh, you skipped some enemies. Well, yeah, we don't want to kill every single enemy. We just want to get the items as soon as possible. And we don't need to rest with this bonfire, so... Let's just kill off this guy. He's a pain in the neck because he's a slightly more HP, if you noticed. And if you jump over here, you can get this tiny nice shard. Uh... And then we just jump attack this guy, and then we're gonna go kill this guy. Uh, oh. I'm, so <laughs> I'm sorry, I mispressed some buttons over here, but uh, no worries. I got out of it. Oh no. No, 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 no. Come on. And then we're gonna do some jump attacks on this guy over here, because he's protecting an item. And whoop. This guy, I uh, just kick him, and then you go poke him in the groin, and then we're gonna grab this item over here, fire bomb. We're not gonna use it against the boss though, but I will show you how we can utilize it in a different area of this map. Uh, now we're gonna go kill this guy, and then we're gonna go kill these guys over here. And yeah, now we get the boss as the last remaining thing in this area. And this boss is just, it's only difficult if you don't know when to dodge or block and whatever, or attack at the right amount. It but as the knight, we can take a hit, we can dish it out as well. And I'm just gonna go grab the extra chance to get some damage in. And also, by the way, with the shield that we have over here, we can take most of his hits without losing any HP. You know what I mean? I have not lost a single HP so far because of the shield. And... Nope. And... Yeah, he's transformed. Whatever. He's not that threatening. And he's about to... And he's dead. Yippee. I'm just gonna activate the bonfire for the giggles. Light it up. And... We're about to enter the Firelink Shrine. And after that, we're gonna do. I'm gonna teach you some basic things. 
what you should do before you enter the main hub world. And ignore this thing over here. It's not that worth it. Uh, we can we could go grab the thing over here, but oh, he decided to attack. This is how you deal with guys with shields and spear. You just kick them, knock them down, humiliate them slightly. But this is a home war bone. We could use it to sell it or use it later when we're grinding. But I can grab this. This is basically a useless weapon. It's not even worth selling anything. I just wanted to show you guys at this moment. Uh, we can ignore all these guys over here because we don't want to deal with their problems. We can do it later. But yeah, you don't have to fight anyone to get to this part of this game. Uh, we put the sword that we pulled out of the guy from earlier into this thing, like so. And we can then talk to this lady over here. Well, I the to and, Very well, then take me. and level us up. Simple as that. Now we have this amount of... Well, I we have mind. increased our life point. And... Yeah, surprisingly the only damage I've received so far is the fall damage, but I'm going to teach you a basic beginner thing to, that must learn. And there's a glitch in this part of this area. Essentially what we can do is jump from this thing over here, uh, if, I, if I can do it flawlessly, oh first attempt. Note this, this glitch is, if you don't get it on the right moment, it's gonna be very difficult but now that you know now you can practice and then learn so essentially we found a guy a thing over here called pickle p and pumper him whatever the selection be cold but we can drop the bomb here and we can only drop one bomb and get this essentially gives us a large titanite shard. This one. It's gonna be useful later on. And we can also drop this. It's a homework bone. The only thing we're gonna get out of it is a arm this emote over here and an armor piece. Once we get more items we can drop more things for it to take, but at the moment we don't have much to take. I mostly go up to this area to get the uh Estus shard. So we can have more flask to heal ourselves. Now, the other main reason why I go up here is because we can grab this. Covetous Silver Serpent Ring. Essentially, as if we were to read the description of this ring, it allows us to get more souls from our opponents. More specifically, 10%. Every opponent that we kill, we gain more souls. Now, I'm gonna go to the blacksmith, and he is going to tra transform one of the shards that we just well, obtained. I am Andre. His name's Andre. I serve at this shrine. I serve this shrine. A humble smith, forging weapons. Nice of you to do. You're in search of the lords of Sindhu, I trust. Yes. A toilsome journey, I wager. Let me see. I am a smith. And some dialogue. What we can do is a lot of... See, when I do this, this the blue thing represents mana flask. The orange thing represents life flask. Given that we are a knight and use barely any of our mana, we're going to get pure life points out of this. Now we reinforce our Estus flask, and now we have one more number of Estus flask in our arsenal. Uh, everything else we cannot use because we, we require one more Titanite Shard to increase the level of a weapon of ours. So Pretty be careful, I go. <laughs> so that's all we can do with him so far. By the way, there is the merchant, basically. Uh, we can buy stuff from this old hag, but I'm just gonna re store our flasks because we just Increase our arsenal 
and I'm gonna remove this one just so our inventory is not gonna be in any whack at all. Now what we can do is fight this uh, NPC to our right and he's called the Swordmaster. Once we kill him we can obtain uh, his gear which is not very much but we're gonna kill him because in early game this is the only time when we kill him that the souls that he dropped is gonna be useful. So let's go kill this guy. Have fun. Poke him. Slap him. Roll it backwards. And rinse and repeat. He's not the sprightest of guys. But he will be slightly gradually more aggressive and difficult the more HP he loses. But as of now, I don't want to be near him because now he's going to be super aggravated. And and the thing is about his weapon, he, it does bleed damage and I really dislike bleed damage. So we got his weapon, we got his attire, we cannot equip his weapon with a knight as of yet because we require more dexterity and we don't want to use that weapon yet. Now, just gonna grab this and then we're gonna go to this circle and we're gonna grab, uh, I'm gonna show you where you can get some extra embers. Here's one ember. Uh, what ember does is simply it increases our HP by 30% and fully restores our HP once used. Too bad we're already embered up, which means we cannot use it again until we die. However, being embered up means we still get the boost. We still get some slightly more physical strength, I believe. But what it mainly allows us is to summon other players into our world. However, unfortunately, that also means we can be invaded in specific areas. And early game is gonna be really hard, no matter how you look at it. And as we can see, this is the, basically the extent of this area, outside from a one secret mini boss, if you can call it a mini boss. Uh, we're, all we're gonna do now is to level ourselves up, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the secret meat boss. Very well, then take. And one more time, we're gonna level ourselves up. Now, you're all probably wondering why am I increasing my life HP? Because here's the thing: the more HP you have, the more time you have to deal damage the more hits you can take and that means if you do a mistake you're most likely gonna be you're more likely to survive it and learn from it and I'm to I've gone to the point where my SS flask doesn't restore me from half health or even a quarter of my health so I can deal and take more damage than uh, I did before I started this game from the last boss. Now, I recommend people to do this until you reach to level 20. And our reward from killing this boss is going to be 4,400 souls. So, I like to two hand my weapons for this. How to two hand? You basically press triangle or the upper buttons where the A, B, C, D are because uh, if you do have a weapon you can uh, that increase the knockback on your weapons but I missed a critical attack and I'm very sad about that and this is a big worry and I hope I can knock him back again, but... Okay, I did manage to knock him. Please get that 
Okay, I'm having a really tough time hit dealing with this guy. But that's okay. Oh, I managed to get one. I just wanted one. And he's most likely dead. But yeah, look at all these souls that I've obtained. Four thousand and four hundred. And it's all because of this tiny little ring over here. Those extra four th four hundred souls. Totally worth it. Oh yeah. Now I can show you what the home warp bone can do. Because I don't want to walk all the way back to Fire Lake Shrine. And... Up up. And that's going to be the end of this recording session. I'm just going to level up. And... All we gotta do is... Reach level 20. And then... Well, yeah, you see, exactly level 20. And you don't have to increase your HP until you go maybe after the next three bosses. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this. Have a lovely day. Please leave a like. And bye-bye.